And welcome back, one and all. Welcome back to the last episode of Overclocked, a history of violence. This is episode 12. It's the finale, and we are at the facility where all those kids were being tested. Okay, let's examine the fence. Come on, Dave. Hey, run a bit quicker. This looks familiar to me. The kids from cells 1 and 3 both mentioned it. And there's a drum as well, but how do I get over there now? From this side? Oh, it's quite simple, Dave, really. First things first, we're going to grab this rock, and then we're going to hit the rock against some other rocks. Okay, now that's going to basically make a sharp edge. We're then going to cut up the dinghy and throw the rubber strips over the fence so we can climb up. Actually, quite a clever little puzzle. But of course, that does rely on the fact that uh, the game has forced us to lose all our items. A little bit annoying, but um, oh well. Hit the cop out, really. Okay, so now we have a sharp rock. Okay, there's a few real nice sharp pieces. Okay, Dave is about to sort of completely forget that he needs to get off this island. Let's cut up the runger dinghy. Right there. It might work with the rubber strips. It will indeed, right. Get back to the fence. Throw these bad boys over and jobs are good. Let's go. Okay, now we're inside and lo and behold, here's the crowbar that they mentioned way back in uh, chapter 2. I can sure use that, especially since I don't have any other weapon. Or video to at least. Now there's a slight discrepancy with the storytelling here. Okay. Fan's still bent, just like they told me. Okay, so example, the fan is still bugger because the gun is still actually blocking it, if you remember way back early in the game. But someone's been here since the kids left, okay? So why the hell didn't they move the gun? It's the end of the game, we'll allow it. Okay, now we want that gun, so we're going to shove the crowbar into the fan. It might work with the crowbar. Yeah, right, I've got it. But the clip's empty. Okay, question number one. Where the hell did the crowbar go? And question number two, why is the clip empty? Now, I'm trying to remember who exactly left the gun there. Now, it was the it was the character that shot out the wall? No, because he used a brick. No, because he then shot the brick. It, was, it wasn't him. So surely the other character who put his gun in there had a full clip when he did it. Hmm. Okay, so new things. This door. We can no longer go into it. We couldn't go into it before, I don't think. But now there's this uh, keypad. The actual password is Goliath. The game never actually tells you that, but it's a, like one or two options. It's either, I think, it's the Cyclops Corporation and this is Project Goliath. So you just have to take a mad guess and you eventually get it. Okay, the only thing we actually need to do now is to go get a gun clip and then we can go into that door. It's unlocked. Look at that. That looks like the tower that the guy in cell 5 was in. And there's the fuel dump, too. That's got to be the gate he blew open. It's been welded up again. Somebody must have been here. Okay, I tell a lie. We also need to go to the watchtower to get the knife that uh, patient number two left up there. It's scary. I need to arm myself. There's got to be ammo here someplace. Hang on. Did patient number two leave it up there? Didn't she use it to open the grate, and then patient number five got the knife back? So what's it doing on top of the tower? Someone please correct me. Ah, here we go. Um, I want the watchtower. That's the watchtower. The girl from cell two was here. Yeah, because the girl from cell two had the knife when they were both, uh, her and the girl from cell four were both locked up. So why is the knife up there? 
Maybe I'm just remembering this wrong. Okay, knife. Okay, one final item before we head to endgame. And that is ammo. So we need to get to the um, ammo dump. Not the ammo dump, sorry, the sort of quartermaster room. Okay. These doors are now welded shut. That's the fuel dump. Let's see, watchtower. It's not that, because that's the... Um... There we go. Weapon store. Strangely unlocked. A bit odd considering the rest of the base has been sealed up. And if you remember from earlier, we didn't actually take all the ammo from here, so we'll have that. Okay, I got a clip. Now I feel better. Okay, let's go. I don't think you can actually go to the end game without grabbing ammo. Dave just won't let you. I've never actually tried it, to be honest. Okay, now we now have to head all the way back. Okay, so we need to head to the fuel dump. And back to the front gate. Back down the hatch. Okay, let's do this. That's a code lock. One of the five mentioned it. It looks new, as though it's only recently been installed. I need to open it somehow. It's quite easy, Dave. You just do this. G. O. L. I. A. T and H usually follows. Open. There you go. What's that? That looks like a... Surveillance monitoring room. There was no mention of this in the recollections. These machines are quite modern. Somebody was here not so long ago. But what the hell was this whole installation for? Okay, we need to get two pieces of evidence of these video cassettes. Now I'm just trying to find in my notes exactly which ones we need. Okay, so we need corridor, day four, not six hours. And that'll be the video of the man shooting up the uh, room doors, which we saw earlier in the game. Somebody's trying to kill her, but who? That line makes absolutely no sense, Dave. You know exactly what that was about. Okay, and then we also need the LAN room. Day 2. 18 to simulator. The program must have had an influence on their minds. Strange. It reminds me of the simulator we were using back in the army. It looked very similar. Could it be that all Dave's violent outbursts are actually been triggered by the same sort of simulation? Yes. Yes, that's exactly the plot. <laughs> so yeah, Dave's actions aren't actually his own, bless him. So that explains uh, quite a few things. Right, we now need to use this knife, and that's the only reason we picked it up, is so we can get through this ventilation shaft. Well, it worked for a guy in cell 5, so it ought to work for me. There we have it. Open. Let's see if I can do it. <sighs> Made it. Here it is. The land room. This is where the five of them were. Okay, we literally have probably four actions left in the game. Action number one. Damn it. 
All of the PCs are wrecked. Yes, they are, but not quite. The idiots have portable hard drives. Although that's not really a portable hard drive, that's a SATA hard drive in a portable hard drive caddy. Get your terminology right, guys. If I can just find some proof of what they were doing here. <laughs> it's not exactly a USB external now, is it? Okay, that's item number one. We also need some duct tape from over here. That's coming with me. I think I just might be able to use it. Okay, here we go. Final th two things of the game. Somebody's done a real good job here. Number one, back into the control room. And number two. A server computer behind armored glass. A cables leading up through the ceiling. Looks like it might be networked to another computer. No doubt that this computer controlled the program. I have to destroy it. I've got enough evidence. I've got the videos and the hard drive. Let's fuck this up, shall we? Let's see a deal with this. And done and done. Am I disturbing you? Mr. McNamara, how nice to see you again. Even if under somewhat deplorable circumstances. What are you doing here? Oh, you're asking me. Shouldn't that be the other way around? I have to admit I'm impressed. You are both persistent and resilient. I never would have thought you would make it here. The water off the dock is 50 feet deep. For a poor swimmer with cuffed hands, that's usually deep enough. Who are you? Not Mr. Clark from Dwight Chemicals, anyway. My name is Warren Zane. I am the project leader for Cyclops Industries. As you can see, we're working here on a few tests for a little piece of software. A further development of the simulators that you may well remember yourself. You're training young people to kill, aren't you? Influencing them with subliminal messages. Exactly right, David. You have an excellent grasp of things. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Or you would never have come here. Who comes of their own free will to their own funeral? You work for the Pentagon. Yes, indeed. As I told you, one of the largest employers in the country. And the Pentagon is testing the effectiveness of this manipulation software. Not only that, we're also testing whether or not we can erase the memories of our test subjects. Dr. Young's chemical method has helped us immensely. However, as we know now, thanks to your work, we must improve it further still. We don't just want killers, David. We want killers who can also withstand interrogation. In today's unconventional wars, memories are a hindrance. He who remembers nothing tells nothing and regrets nothing. So, your methods have failed and my investigations in Staten Island are proof. Ah, David, I believe you really are quite movingly naive. Your results are very interesting to us. Your work is going to help us improve Goliath. The next version will resist any psychiatrist. You can count on that. Why do you think we entrusted these cases to you in the first place? So I'm part of your experiment? But of course. You were already a part of the Forerunner experiments. Have you never asked yourself where your aggressive outburst came from? Of course you have. You mean my work on the simulator? Precisely. Sorry about your wife. We couldn't have known that our experiment would have caused such an unfortunate side effect. However, we find ourselves at war. And as you well know, in war there are casualties. Which brings us to... the unfortunate part of our conversation. I'm really very sorry, David. It's the big person. Pull the trigger. You're gonna disappoint me if you don't. You're a killer, Dave. You can't do anything else. Go on, do it. Like with your wife, David. Get it off your chest. You see, you wanted to do it. You're a success, Dave. Thanks for the help.
I'm still here. My eyes see. My ears hear. My head thinks. The other is dead. The world turns when it clicks almost silently. When it gets dark, you don't see who's flipped the switch. Time stops. Just a moment. The world keeps turning with us. Without us. Cliff Mandrake. Broker. Laura Fawcett. Art student. Victoria Montgomery. Model. Jonathan Bate. Student. Ray Thornton. Warehouse worker. David McNamara. Psychiatrist. Switched. Overclocked. Darkened. I'm still here. My eyes see. I'm alone. At last. The storm is over. That bit of the ending was absolutely fine. This bit of the ending makes no fucking sense. There is no need... She would not go back to him. Oh, all the violent stuff was just because the, like, the experiments were making me angry. Yeah, whatever, Dave. So there we go. There's a bit of a shoehorned happy ending in there. And that's it. That was one of the last games that House of Tales actually made as well, which is actually quite a big shame. Not bad at all, a bit slow to begin with, but it did get good. And then of course we have the slightly dubious ending, but either way, not bad. I've been Tremors Prime and I will catch you next time. Ta-ta for now.